Well, David was two years older than I, and uh, as a young boy, and as a teenager, and, and, and a young adult. You know, epilepsy was, was always there. And the problems stemmed from, you know, from the schoolyard to a work environment as David tried, got a little older and tried to enter the, you know, the workforce. And, you know, so as, as we all kind of grew up and grew older, it became a lot more evident of the, the silence of, of epilepsy. I think a lot of the big difficulties were, were the lack of understanding of other people. It's without a wheelchair and without a crutch. So people don't see it until something happens. The opportunity to reach out, you know, to uh, to an agency uh, that has the answers with, you know, oh my God, what do I do now? Um, you know, that wasn't available, you know, to us as a family in the 50s and 60s. Getting involved uh, with epilepsy Durham is uh, is something that uh, I know I personally wish I had have done earlier. Fortunately, David passed in '86, you know, as a result of having a seizure. It hurts to know that. You know, what we went through as a family and I went through as a brother and experienced, uh, a lot of that is still there. I would like to see better, you know, education is better understanding of, of what it is. Um, you know, a young person having a seizure doesn't need to sit off in the corner, they need to be embraced. When there's so many thousands and thousands of families in the region living with, with epilepsy, it's not just the individual uh, that has been diagnosed and helping them understand their life from here on um, but it's also helping brothers and sisters and moms and dads and helping families like like the Douglas family back in the 60s.